qualitative and arts-based evidence for, from children participating in a pilot randomized controlled study of school-based arts therapy. This was published in Children, June 19, 2022, the National Library of Medicine, National Institute of Health. Daphna Rejev is the academic editor. Abstract. Background. There's limited evidence on the impact of arts therapy as a tool for the prevention of mental health difficulties in childhood. This pilot randomized control study aimed to investigate the impact of arts therapies on children's mental health and well-being. The qualitative and arts-based evidence is presented in this article. Two methods. 62 children aged 7 to 10 with mild emotional and behavioral difficulties were recruited from across four primary schools and were randomly assigned to either art therapy, music therapy, dance movement therapy, or drama therapy. All children were interviewed individually after their participation in arts therapies. Three results. Children verbally and artistically expressed that they experienced positive changes in their mental health and well-being, such as improved self-expression, safety, empowerment, hope, and optimism for the future. The arts were particularly important for expressing complex emotions and feelings that could not be easily verbalized. Recommendations are provided to improve the quality of group arts therapies in future interventions, such as through smaller groups, longer ses sessions, and strategies to protect the therapeutic environment. Four conclusions. The study embraced all art therapies as one research domain and set children's verbal and nonverbal responses at the heart of outcome evaluation. This article highlights the importance of incorporating qualitative and arts-based methods to capture changes in children's mental health, well-being in future experimental studies. Number one, introduction. Children's mental health and well-being has become central to global policy, such as the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals for Good Health and Well-Being, and the World Health Organization call for the integration of mental health provisions within the school curriculum. Despite that, the National Health Care System, NHS, in the UK, reported an increase in mental health disorders among children and adolescents from 1 in 9 in 2017 to 1 in 6 in 2020, with a sharp rise in self-harm, eating disorders, sleep disturbance, depression, and anxiety. Following the COVID-19 pandemic, one in five children in the UK, equating to 1.1 million, have reported feeling unhappy with their lives. While clinically significant mental health conditions, loneliness, and isolation in childhood increased by 50%. These figures are estimated to be even higher for children from vulnerable groups, such as low-income households, special educational needs, neurodevelopmental differences, or children exposed to adverse childhood experiences. Another concerning issue is that although the rate of domestic abuse rose by at least 30%, the number of children coming to the attention of services has fallen dramatically since the first lockdowns and school closures. In addition, the economic uncertainty exasperated by the pandemic and the environmental uncertainty due to the climate crisis have added significant burdens to children and young people across the globe. 
Children's mental health needs are now believed to have dramatically exceeded the capacities of the National Health Service and the Children and Adolescent Mental Health Services, and there is an urgency to radically rethink the scope of support that children receive. Children spend an inordinate amount of time in school. A place where children's emerging needs can be identified and appropriate and timely support are provided. Schools are often the only place that can facilitate equity of access to mental health services without excluding children who need it the most. Their remit as educational institutions can reduce stigma and increase inclusivity while also accessing supportive networks of peers, teachers, healthcare professionals, and parents. Furthermore, school-based counselors and psychotherapists can streamline the referral process and target children experiencing barriers due to the lack of transportation, parent work schedules, funding, and inadequate treatment from other sources. Nevertheless, a major challenge for school mental health services is that the focus relies heavily on the treatment of severe difficulties or disorders, whereas early detection and prevention may be equally important. When opportunities for prevention are missed, chances for school dropout, self-harm, aggressive and violent behaviors, or even suicide are increased. The centrality of early prevention and intervention has been a cons consistent theme with governmental policies with a long-standing recognition of the importance of schools in the early identification of children's mental health difficulties. Delayed identification of mental health difficulties in children may accumulate in costly crisis interventions alienation from school, and long-term impacts on children, their families, and communities. For example, 7,000 children are being excluded from schools annually in the UK, equivalent to 35 children a day, while 1,300 of these exclusions come from primary schools. These exclusions could have been avoided with prevention and timely interventions at the early stages of children's education. In contrast, it's estimated that more than 70% of children lack supportive services at a sufficiently early age. 30% of referrals are turned away and waiting lists can take up to a year. Such delays have long-lasting and potentially irreversible negative effects for children's mental health and well-being. Despite growing evidence around the impact of arts therapies on children's mental health and well-being, the central focus on workforce training and intervention implementation in schools has tended towards traditional and empirically recognized approaches such as counseling. Cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, and talking therapies. Art therapies is an umbrella term referring to art, music, drama, and dance movement therapy. Psychotherapeutic approaches that aim to facilitate psychological change and personal growth using arts media. Arts therapies have been defined as the creative use of artistic media for nonverbal and or symbolic communication within a holding environment encouraged by a well-defined client-therapist relationship in order to achieve personal and social therapeutic goals appropriate for the individual. In the UK, arts therapies are recognized professions. Art therapy, music therapy, and drama therapy are regulated by the Health and Care Professionals Council, HCPC, while dance movement psychotherapy is regulated by the UK Council for Psychotherapy, UKCP. Arts therapies have been used widely for children and young people in a wide range of settings, such as hospitals, clinics, and outpatient treatment facilities. More recently, arts therapists have seen a substantial growth of employment in educational settings, bridging the gap between health and education. It's estimated that more than half 
of all registered art therapists in the UK are working with children and young people. But this may vary for the different types of arts therapies. The latest workforce survey in art therapy showed that 68% of all art therapies were working with children and young people, while 35% of them were based in schools. In dance movement therapy, it's estimated that 33% of dance movement therapies were working with children and young people, while schools were the third most reported setting, 28% of all posts. Following contact with the British Association of Drama Therapists in 2020, it was estimated that approximately half of the registered drama therapists were working with children and young people, the majority of whom were based in schools. Despite that, the inclusion and integration of art therapies into regular mental health provision in educational settings has only recently begun. Underpinning arts therapies with rigorous research will strengthen such an integration. We designed and conducted a pilot crossover randomized controlled study aiming to explore whether all the components of the study can work together and run smoothly in a larger trial and investigate the impact of arts therapies on several quantitative, qualitative, and arts-based outcomes. The protocol was published before the beginning of the study, and furthermore, the first research question was addressed in a separate publication, which presented the qualitative evidence of this study, and the current article aims to address the second research question, presenting the qualitative and arts-based evidence from the children who participated in the arts therapies. Conclusions. Children verbally and artistically expressed that they experienced positive changes in their mental health and well-being, such as self-expression, safety, empowerment, hope, and optimism for the future. The arts were particularly important for expressing complex emotions and feelings that cannot be easily verbalized. These benefits were linked to humanistic theories, self-determination, and self-actualization theory, P-E-R-M-A theory, and empowerment theory. This study employed a novel approach to working with children, embracing all arts therapies as one research domain and setting children's verbal and nonverbal responses at the heart of outcome evaluation. The study also highlighted areas for improvement based on evidence grounded on children's perspectives, redirecting the focus of research to encompass children's perspectives, may result in better informed policies and practices, encouraging decisions that are aligned to children's needs. The implementation of the recommendations discussed in this article may increase the benefits of children's health and well-being, as well as the wider recognition and inclusion of arts therapies in national and international health-related guidelines. This may be a crucial step for the survival and thriving of arts therapies in educational and healthcare systems worldwide.